Welcome to REST, which stands for Resiliency and Empowerment Seminar today. I am Susan Gans and I am your host. I am also the founder of Gans Strategic Solutions, where we work at the intersection of business and human behavior. This show is about talking to leaders of small and mid-sized businesses, as well as executives of nonprofits. We hear about the journeys of the leaders, as well as highlight their organizations, and hear about how they're being resilient, especially during these challenging times. I am delighted to have today's guest, who is Judith Gaffney. A bit about Judith. She is the founder and designer of Culture Trees Designs, which she launched in May of 2018 in honor of her mother and father who inspired her to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Judith and her mother, the late Jean Broadway, started a clothing business about 20 years ago. To continue with the fashion mantle, as she says, Judith was determined to be creative by providing extensive palettes of bodacious colors and prints infused in a collection of curated premium garments. Culture Trees Designs is intentional about impacting lives. A portion of the sales is given to help children from Family Service League Transitional Housing to attend the BLAST Entrepreneurship Camp for one week in the summer. During the peak of COVID-19, Culture Trees responded to an urgent request for scrub caps from the ICU nurses at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Within days, the scrub caps were made and donated the African-inspired scrub caps illuminated the entire ICU unit. And what a heartwarming story. I was <laughs> so delighted to have you here, Judith. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. So let's dive in and hear about this uh, journey you've been on with entrepreneurship and fashion. How did you get into this? Oh, you know, I've always loved business. My father always encouraged me to have a business mindset. I mean, when I was in high school, he would say to me, when you go to college, major in business. And then my mom was an entrepreneur because she had her own business. She was a hairstylist, so she had her own hair salon. So I came from a background um, that inspired you and encouraged you to maximize your potential and do the best you can do, the best you can do and to be an entrepreneur. So I was brought up that way. My parents would never settle for mediocrity. If I came home with a B, it would, it would be like, why didn't you get an A? If I came home with an A, it's like, what, is there a possibility you could have got an A plus? They always provoke, I know, it was like, ma, dad, really? I'm, <laughs> I know, there's so much pressure. But you know what they wanted? They really wanted the best for us. And so they pushed us to excel in every area of our lives. I just remember even coming home, when I walked in the door, the first thing was, did you speak? Make sure you're polite, make sure you're kind, make sure you acknowledge people in the room, make sure you build a relationship with your mom and your dad, make sure you sit down and talk to me and tell me about your day, how are you? Don't just go in your room, we're gonna have a conversation. So when I think about that, and I look back on how I was brought up to be respectful, to be kind, to be considerate, and to do my best, and to never settle for mediocrity, never settle for anything that wasn't excellent. This is all incorporated in good business skills. It's, it's a part of being a good business individual. So through that background, and my mom also then starting, my mom and I started a fashion company, Broadway Fashions, that's my maiden name, Broadway. And awesome. so my mom, yeah, my mom started a fashion company and we both started it together. And with that, I, I learned the business and then she passed. And so it was, it's over, already been in me. It's, it's already been a part of, of who I am to be a business person and then fashion. And my mom was very fashion conscious. She just, you know, we had to have then, you know, your shirt had to match your pants and your shoes had to match this. So, you know, we had we were these kids that were lined up, four of us, that had everything matching and smiling. And it, so, <laughs> I know, it's, as you look back over life and today it's like, 
just put something on. It's like, it's like, you know, I mean, look neat and be clean and shower and take care of your body. But listen, if blue and green are together, just today, it's, it's not the same. <laughs> But yes, definitely. So my passion for fashion, I believe, started as a child. I was always conscious of how I looked and color schemes. And I love, I was always drawn to, to fashion. I was always drawn to Vogue and, and all of the trends that were going on. And I would always tell my mom, I want this. This is the latest. And so definitely, I've always been drawn to fashion and Manhattan. And so, yeah, that's, that's how I got started. And, and then I decided, like you shared in 2018, to launch Culture Trees, which was already a part of me. It just needed to come out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a few things that come from your story that I want to dive into. One is it sounds like your mom and dad were your first mentors. And I'm curious about other mentors that you might have had along the way as well as sponsors, people who have advocated for you and your behalf when you're not in the room. Can you talk a bit about that? Sure, definitely. My mom and my dad were my first mentors and I'm so grateful to them. Um, they have just left such a legacy with my brothers and my sister and myself. And so we are, um, I'm, I'm very appreciative to my parents for that. Um, I've definitely had other mentors along the line. I've had mentors such as, um, there, there have been people who've come alongside of me, I would say, in my church space and, and in my workspace that always inspired me. I, I, there's a, in particular person, um, in particular a person comes to mind by the name of Dr. John H. Boyd, who um, was an overseer of many, many ministries, very powerful, just a charisma, just a charisma about him, just inspired me. And he always provoked me to come out of the box. He would ask me questions that he knew I didn't know. He would just like, so what is, what is going on today? Or, or, I mean, I knew what was going on today, but what is the next plan? What is your next step? I mean, just, I mean, out of nowhere, I'm like, you know, I, let me think about this. And he would ask me loaded questions that would take me out of the norm of just thinking, yeah, my day is well. No, your day, but what are you doing to move forward? And so I, I'm really grateful to people like that. My sister's also been a very, uh, a great inspiration to me. Um, she's always provoking me to to go beyond, as she says, to break the box, not go in the box, but break the box. And she she always been, she always inspired me just to maximize my potential. And she's always been a support. Everything that I do, she's always run alongside of me and encouraged me. She's been such a cheerleader. And then my husband, my husband has always inspired me. How big is your dream? Whatever you dream. I dream it with you and I will support you. I will support you financially. I will back you. I will be there. My husband is such an inspiration that it's like every dream that I've had, he's like, okay, that's fine. What are we going to do? How are you going to do this? And he's, he has such a, his name is Cy. So we call him scientific because he's into science and sci-fi. <laughs> and so he has such a scientific and analytical thought process that it's provocative. He makes me think beyond the box. And so Judy, what about this? And, and did you think about, and did you check this out? And he's in, and he loves to read. So he, and he has a dynamic personality. So he's provoked me and encouraged me and supported me. What is it? We can get it. We can finance it. We'll do this. Between my sister, Dr. Boyd and my husband, I'm surrounded well, Dr. Boyd has passed on, but I'm surrounded with people who are just an inspiration. My brother-in-law is an inspiration also. So I am really um, surrounded with people who really make the difference in my life and encourage me to go beyond what I see, beyond, don't stop at what you see. There's more than that. So I, I'm, I've really, between my husband, my sister, and um, my family has just been a support financially, um, emotionally, and in every way, with every dream that I've had, they've been an inspiration and an encouragement. That's so important to have your support system. I often talk to people about uh, having that as one of the pillars of foundational pillars of success is to make sure you're surrounded by the people who can lift you up, who see things that you might not see, and it's fantastic that right there, built into your family structures, you have this diversity 
of thought and perspective that is pushing you, asking questions that maybe you haven't thought of, and really seeing that future for you. It's, it's really very, very motivating. Yeah, and they can ask you those real questions, Susan, like, really? Do you really think that? But, you know, I mean, do you think that that's going to work? And if so, then how do you plan to budget for that? You know, just, just real questions that, not to stop you, but to provoke you to make your plan more extensive so that you are prepared for the obstacles that are yet ahead. So I, appre I appreciate that transparency that's in my husband and that's in my sister and, um, and, and my brother-in-law and those that surround me because it, it causes you to think and it also causes you to prepare more. Absolutely. And I think what you're bringing up too, in addition to the transparency is earlier in your story, you shared more about being yourself and being authentic. You said when you started the business, it was, you had to get it out of you. So talk more about that is authenticity in business. Yeah, I believe that, um, you know, your passion can't reside, you know, just as something that you see inside of you. Your passion has to be expressed. And um, it is expressed in the way you do your business, in the way you treat people, and the way you make your plans. And so for me, um, my passion for fashion, my passion to empower and inspire people through fashion is, is important. It's important that I'm, I'm honest with myself. It's important that I take an honest look at um, my assets, um, my liabilities, my whole network system. And, and it's, it's just important because when you are honest and you're your authentic self, you give people the best. You are the best you. No one else can be you. No one else can be me. So I have to be the best me so I can serve you the best. And you're talking my language. I, you're echoing something that I do in my coaching and mentoring with leaders. It's about just be you. You do the best version of you. So that's a great me message to be putting out there for Thank sure. You. And tell me more about how your authenticity, your transparency, your kindness comes up in your leadership values. Oh, definitely. Transparency is very important to be a leader. I believe a leader should model. Um, and as you model transparency, people see, you know, how you handle things and, and how, you, how, you, how you deal with even the stressful times. And it's not always, and it's okay saying, you know, I'm not okay. You know, it's okay. It doesn't make me a weak person. It makes me a better person because I'm being honest with you that I'm really not okay. And I need to work on some things right now. I'm really not feeling what's going on right now. But as long as I express myself with transparency, with to me knowing that there's a diplomatic way to express myself and always being considerate of the people I serve because the people I serve watch the way I handle things. I think it's very important that my transparency is done with diplomacy and it's done with, with consideration on how I would like to be treated. And also with being honest to say, you know, I'm not okay. And there's some things I need to work on. There's some things we as a team need to work on. And so definitely that's important and being authentic, being authentic about yourself, being authentic about the situations that are at hand is very important. I believe it, it is, truly a motivational key because I'm, I'm motivated by knowing that, you know, listen, this is, this is where I am and this is where I need to be. So because I'm not feeling like I'm up to par in this arena, there's something that I have to do. And you know what? It might mean that I need to go outside of these borders here and bring someone else in and, and get some help and get some assistance. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be you. It's okay to say, you know what? This is not working. What do we need to do? Because there are, I believe that we need to know how to use a pool of resources. So leadership is really important. Leadership is, is, is being transparent enough to say, I'm not okay. And what do I need to get where I'm supposed to be? Who, maybe I need help. What assistance do I need? What do we need to do? And I, I just think it's, it's all about being uh, like you said, being transparent and not being scared, not having fear to reach outside of, of your 
quote unquote, circle your borders and to bring in new resources, to get new ideas, to reinvent yourself. Don't get stuck in, in a box and it's time to reinvent yourself. And maybe this, this collection is not working. Well, I might think it's great, but I'm serving my customers. What do they think? So maybe I have to change my color scheme. Maybe I have to tone down for this particular customer. It's always about how I can be a better um, individual to serve others. And what you're bringing out is vulnerability and being relatable. It took me a while to learn that lesson, that it was okay to not have all the answers. And for somebody who's type A and tends to be a perfectionist, that's a very hard lesson to learn. <laughs> so you're laughing, it might have resonated. With yes, it does, it does. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. My mom, you know, I was like, I, when, I, when I think about her, I'm like, she, her hair was always in place. Her clothes were always neat. And just everything, the house was immaculate. I mean, just, and so I was, we were brought up. I mean, we were children that we had to scrub walls. We had to vacuum in corners and, you know, everything was pristine, you know? I mean, nothing was out of place. So we, it, this, this, this mindset of excellence was ingrained. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we couldn't put our hands on the walls. It's like, no, do not. These walls are freshly, but you don't. <laughs> my mom. It's like so funny. You look back over your life and like immaculate refrigerator. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I tell you, but you know, those things translate into like that you say that A type personality that, and, and I've got to step back. I've got to step back and say, it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable and it doesn't make you weak. It no. makes you better. It makes yes. you a better individual because it makes you relatable because everybody is going through something and has had, and has had challenges and people want people who identify with them based by the line. Yes. <laughs> want, yeah. So that brings me to a question about resiliency. How are you being resilient during these challenging times? Yes, these challenging and unprecedented times. You know, resilience is, is I believe, is built in me as an individual um, from my background, from having parents who were very resilient, um, who encouraged me to work hard and never give up. Um, and I say that I give, think of this example where my mother would say, um, you don't feel well? Well, you're still going to school, <laughs> like mom. And, you know, she knew that once I got to school, I would be okay. I mean, if, if I was sick, I had a fever, of course I would stay home. But she taught me how to, to even go against many times the obstacles that I built in my own mind. <laughs> and sometimes we can have these obstacles in our own mind that, that make us think that we can't do something or, you know, it's too hard. Um, she didn't get it, so I can't get it. And, and you know, she's smarter than I am. And, but, but my mom would say, you can do it. And, and if you're sick, stay home. But you know, you're really not sick, go to school. And so I was always pushed to, to even challenge my own thoughts. And I believe being that brought up that way has made me a very resilient person. So what I've been doing in this, resil in, in this time of, uh, you know, challenging time and unprecedented time, I've, I've found ways to help others with, with the scrub caps. I looked for ways, how can I create something that will help those, those workers who are on the front line, those essential workers who are there every day dealing with families who cannot contact their loved ones, dealing with people who are dying, and, and then they, they're scared to go home because they don't want to bring the COVID-19 into their own homes. So what I decided to do, which helped me in this situation, in this season, I should say, of life, is to, to, to curate some things that would help them. And I found it very fulfilling. 
you know, I found it very inspirational just to say, oh, let me get on this and work and work hard and, you know, cut the threads and make sure that my team is sewing and, and that things are lined up right and get these in the mail and, and then putting on all my gear to get outside. I look, my sister's like, you look like you're ready for war. I had a, like, it looked like my hat, a mask, a coat, a hood, you know, because it was in March. So, and my sister's like, you look like you're ready for a battle. But, you know, to me, to go to the post office was, was strategic because of, you know, it was a peak season. So I found, and then to pick up the material, which I already had, but I had to give it to the lady who sewed for me, and she had to sew. So it was the whole process. So this whole, this whole time, I, I found myself to be resilient. I believe it was already in me, but this COVID-19 pulled out more resiliency because I wanted to help those essential workers who had to be resilient and had to even call families and say, your loved one has passed, your loved one is transitioning. Can you talk to them? Or I had to, I felt I had to be resilient for them. And, and preparing PPE just made me, and to know that they were happy, just made me so fulfilled and so um, just content. I'm like, wow. You know, I, I just felt excited and, and so appreciative to be able to serve in that capacity. It's so amazing how you quickly met the challenge and the needs. You saw something, oh, I can fill that gap and I can give back and I can rally my team and I have the fabric and and we already have a team in place to sew and it's just a matter of realigning some things and and stepping up and doing that and what a, a beautiful uh, gift that you've given to the world it's, it's very thank very you. inspiring thank you. thank you so much Susan I appreciate that when I look back over this too you know, the lady who sews for me is, you know, has some health problems, but she lives alone in a, you know, one bedroom apartment. And her sewing kept her vibrant because her family is not, is not here. Her family is in the Caribbean. So her sewing and, and helping me and putting the, putting the elastic in, she, it, it just kept her vibrant. It kept her not, you know, and she lives in a senior citizen complex and she just, it kept her alive. It kept her with hope. And I really felt it was a duel. There was an exchange. We were helping essential workers and we were helping each other. There was just, it wasn't just me helping the essential workers. They were helping me. I was helping the, um, and the lady who was sewing for me. She was helping. It was such an exchange of love and of consideration. And that really seems to be a theme that's been running through your business with giving back with proceeds going to the BLAST Entrepreneurship Program. You want to talk more about that? Sure. BLAST is the acronym for Building Leaders and Skill Training. So BLAST was a camp that we started about four years ago. And we it, it's a camp that we take children from um, a shelter. It's, it's a transitional housing. And it's the Family Service League. We take the children from, we take as many as we can, uh, maybe about 20 or so. And we take them away from the shelter and we bring them to this location where we hold the camp at. And for an entire week, we teach them how to build a business plan on their level. And then we help them build a business. We teach them how to market, how to sell a product. And we teach them how to develop social skills. And then not only that, but remember these children are from a transitional house. So they, so they you know, most likely they're from single parent. Most of them are from single parent um, families. And so after that, we, we teach them how to do, um, we teach them via gaming, how to socialize. We take them tree uh, zip lining and something they've never been, something they've never done before. And so during zip lining, they're building social skills. They have to zip line with a team. So they know how they have to work with their team. And that's team building, which is a part of business. And also then we take them to um, a Marine camp. So we take them to a marine camp where they're exposed to marine biology. They talk to a marine biologist. They go out in, in the water and they pull in them. 
things from the water and they look at them and they look at them under the microscope and they see how important it is not to litter and to take care of the environment. So all, we, we do a lot of exposures. We take them to a small business where they talk to a small business owner, all of this in one week. But we make the BLAST camp a fun learning experience. So it, it's, it's so rewarding and they usually build and they usually build the kind of business, maybe a lemonade or they do what they call cookie pizza, little businesses like that. But it's still, what it is, it's stimulating them to think outside of the barriers that they live in right now and to know that there's more than what they see. There's more outside of, of where you live. And so we want you to, to, to move towards that. Exposure really um, ignites a desire for more like i they, they i didn't know this was this existed so yeah they, they feel like that i didn't know this could happen it really sounds like what you're doing is empowering them to see beyond what they might see or right yes. what what's in front of their eyes but you're taking them through something else that's possible for them that they wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to. And that seems to be a theme with you. Yes, definitely. Right? That's, our, that's our desire, my desire. So in wrapping up, tell us what you would like people to remember about our conversation today. Definitely. I would like for um, people to remember that never give up. Uh, you are capable of achieving your wildest dreams and goals. And those things come, though obstacles come, they will come because that's life. Anything you hit long and hard enough, anything you press long and hard enough, it will break. It's just that sometimes when we hit it and we have, oh my gosh, it didn't happen. The door closed, I can't get the loan. They're not asking, they're not, they're not accepting my resume. They don't wanna see me. That doesn't mean that it's over for you. Keep hitting it keep going again. And I, I just believe anything you hit long and hard enough, it will break through for you. So resiliency, learn to be resilient by keep going and, and love yourself, love you and be the best you, be the best you and accept you, accept you and be the best you. And then also I would like to share this last thing not only not don't give up, be resilient, don't be scared to be vulnerable. Don't be scared to be open. Don't be scared to be transparent. Though that's, you are so valuable that your jewels will be appreciated by those who, who realize that they have a great individual in their midst. So don't be scared to be, value, to be vulnerable. You're valuable. I'm gonna repeat these messages they are very inspiring and importantly, very powerful. So Judith says, never give up. You're capable. Keep going at it. Even though you think you might not get through, break through. Be your best you. Just be you. Love yourself. It's okay to be vulnerable and transparent. You have value. It's okay not to have all of the answers. And that's where your broader community and relationships and support system come into play, like we've seen in Judith's life. So Judith, how can people find you? Because we definitely want people to find you. Definitely. You can find me on my website, which is culturetreedesign.com, H-T-T-P-S, colon, www.culturetreedesign.com. And you can reach me at 631-220-3721. And I will repeat that. That's Judith's website, culturetreedesign.com, or directly at 631-220-3721. Judith, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you for sharing your journey and being inspired by your family. I am certainly motivated. And to our audience, we so appreciate you tuning in. And we hope that you take away this message of being you and being your best self.